can still hear you. Uh, the law of sines was the sine of, nope, don't want that up. Okay. The sine of A over A equals the sine of B over B equals the sine of C over C. And that's given any, any triangle. It does not have to be a right triangle. <clears throat> so if I just pick three points, put them down, connect the dots, um, I have angles A, B, C, and side lengths small A, small B, small C. This is always going to be how you guys are going to draw these. You're going to put angles opposite sides. So a couple of you guys on the test were even asking this question about, like, did I give you not enough information? I, I am. Um, every time I do a capital letter, it's going to be an angle. Every time I do a side length, it's going to be a lowercase. What you guys should have been doing on the last assignment is using this to solve for the rest of the triangle. And you can use a few other things. Um, you know that um, in a right triangle, you know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You can't actually use it here. No, actually, you have to use law of signs on everything. OK. The problem comes with this case. You guys, the other day, gave me several cases of um, side length and combinations that are actually going to give you um, everything else you need to have. You know that if you have angle side angle, um, that that's going to determine a unique triangle. Because anytime you have two angles, you actually have all three angles. The, the third angle is easy to find given the other two. Um, you know that that determines a unique triangle. You know that side angle side also determines a unique triangle. And with the law of sines, if you can find any single one of these, a sine over a sine, you can establish a ratio and do this whole thing. The problem actually occurs now with this case, the proverbial angle side side case. I want to kind of dip into the reasons why this does not determine a unique triangle. And if you get to that, uh, this is how it looks. You're given angle A, side length A, and side length B. What you are not given, um, you're not given, I'm just going to kind of put it here, you're not given two other angles. This is a unique case of where if you're not given two other angles, the way that you end up having to draw this, you're going to draw an angle A kind of sitting like that. And side length A is going to be opposite angle A. Side length B can be the one that's in between them. So I'm going to draw B and then an angle A, or side length A. You don't quite know how this is going to connect. We're going to start that. But what the, what the issue happens is that you end up running against a few cases. Here's a case, we'll call this case one, where if the way I drew this, and I'm going to put a little dot, dot, dot here because I don't really know how that, I don't, that's side length C. I don't know that one. The way I drew this th with the information given, this triangle wouldn't close. Um, and since it doesn't close, even though I'm given a unique angle, a side, and another side, this one would not work. Another case happens here where if I have an acute angle A, B, and I have a length A, I'm going to try, try to draw this as well as I can. I don't, again, I don't know how long this side is. I do know what angle A is. I do know what side length B is. And if I'm given side length A that is somewhere in between side length B and the height of this triangle, it could look like this. I'm going to try and just switch the colors on that. It could look like this where the triangle closes that way, but it could also look like this. And there's two possible ways to have that triangle form uh, with the information of little a, little b, and side length a. And it could be anywhere. Well, I'm, I'm kind of saying that a is specified. A is a definite length. So with these lengths that I just drew there, there could be two ways that that could happen. But I think what you're thinking is that let's say that the side length a is exactly the same as what the height of that triangle would be. We'll call this case 2. This would be case 3 where my side length A forms a right triangle, and there's only one way for that to close. So with all this, 
you don't need to memorize anything about how the cases go because the mathematics work out. And if you know the math that you're doing to find all these different things, all you need to have an awareness of is all of the trig that we've done before. So let me give you an example that's actually like a mathematics example. We'll start with, <clears throat> with cases where I'm giving you, let's go angle A is 80 degrees, little a is 20, and little b is 20. First thing I would do <clears throat> is draw just a small sketch. Your sketch may not tell you everything. It may not even tell you much, but it will help you place what's happening here. If I know that angle A is 80 degrees, then I'm going to draw this angle as an acute angle. So my acute angle is going to happen like this. I'm going to put a little dot, dot, dot there because I don't know how long that base is. But I'm going to call this 80 degrees. That's angle A. I'm going to call this B is equal to 20. And I know that this has to be B, uh, A is equal to 20. Would you agree with me that the only way that this can possibly happen is if it's kind of perfectly, perfectly, when I say isosceles, where A is equal to 20? No. That there's no other way for that, that triangle to form or close? If it swung left and it went the other way, it would actually form right up with that previous line segment. It wouldn't be a triangle. This is something that we can kind of suspect and then start to work through and see if the math actually confirms this. So I'm going to start to do the law of sines, where I do the sine of 80 degrees over 20 equals the sine of B over 20. You actually don't necessarily have to be a math god to know right now what B would be. S sine of something over 20 equals sine of B over 20. What would that be? 80. Yeah, that have to be B is equal to 80 degrees. However, and this is the key thing with the law of sines, there is one other possible angle that B could be that has the exact same sign of, of this, that has the exact same sign value as the sine of 80 degrees. And this is where you have to go back to the trig that we've been doing before. We're going to go back to the unit circle. Here's 80 degrees. What is the other angle that would have exactly the same sign value? Well, 80 plus 360 would, but that would not appear in a triangle. Okay. So which, which quadrant are we looking at, by the way? Where's sine positive? One and two. We're only going sine's positive. We can't have negative values because we're going to go with a triangle here. So I want to have the equivalent 80 degrees in quadrant two. Careful, 120. 100. It would be 100, yeah. 180 minus, I'm going to write that up here, 180 degrees minus 80 degrees gives me 100. So another possibility, another possibility is that B is equal to 100 degrees. Okay. This is the key thing now. I want you to rule out 100 degrees in this triangle. I want you to tell me why B could not be 100 degrees. <laughs> So one person, tell me why for sure B can't be one, 100. Give, give, me, give me one. That's what I'm looking for. So if angle A is 100 and angle or is 80 and angle B is 100, you've used up all of your 180 degrees on those two angles. You don't have an angle C. And so, Taylor, you said that you'd have a straight line? You, yes. But yeah, it wouldn't. this triangle wouldn't form. So that's out. And it's important that you're able to rule that out because the whole thing is that we're going to have multiple angles that have the same possible sign value. Mm. And the whole thing with that is that you're talking about angles in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 only because you need to have angles form a triangle, only 0 to 180. So if B is 80 degrees, uh, let's get down what angle C is. I mean, I should know that right away now. Yeah, angle C would have to be the remaining 20 degrees. And we can use the sine of 80 degrees over 20 equals the sine of 20 degrees over little c to solve for what that little c value would be. c is equal to 20 sine of 20 over the sine of 80 degrees. I did bring a calculator. And if anyone has the, uh, 
I tried, you guys are the first class that I updated because literally that update came out while you guys were taking the test. If anyone has inspires that were not updated, um, please do that. It has that ability to change the degree and radian value right away. Uh, you give it to me when we're not, I'm not in the middle of doing stuff right now. So we're going to do two. Just two decimal places. So this will be 6.95, whatever the units are. One of the things I do want to get better at for the test, to make it quicker on my part, is to just get a way for you guys to highlight and show me what are your new values that you want me to see. Because the other three were in there. Um, so, yeah, Tay. Um, for, the, for solving for the B, why can't we just solve like, the problem equations on side? You can. I mean, when I saw for the B in this case, you can do arc sine. I just looked at this equation right here and figured out what's, I mean, yeah, looking at that, we would have to, other... we are going to have to use arc sine in a little bit here. Would that just like have to bypass those other solutions of like coming to think? Would no. it have given me 80? You might have had to think more. Oh, really? I mean, if you did arc sine here, you would get 80. Yeah. Like if you solved that around, because the only thing that's going to work is 80, you still have to think about the 100 degree solution. Arc sine will only spit out values in quadrant one for positive numbers. You have to know that there's a quadrant two number as well. But let's keep going. This will be a little bit clearer as we do an example that doesn't form quite that way. So let's go angle A is 40 degrees, new example. Little a is 19, and little b is 20. This is almost the same example, but I'm making one little change on little a. It's now small enough that it can form two different triangles. So if I draw this case, um, we're going to go angle A is 40. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, I don't know what this base side is. Call that A. This is B is equal to 20. And this is hard to get two cases going, but I'm going to try. I want to copy this and move this off to the right side because there's two different ways that this triangle can form. The first and most obvious way is that if this side is 19, it's going to come out and touch right you know, on the base there, and we're going to get a triangle that forms like this. This would be A is 19. What's the other way that it can go? You, you can. You don't have to. I'm not kind of evaluating. I'm going to raise this 40, too, because I know it's going to get in the way. How else can this triangle form? If it went straight down, it'd probably be longer than, it, than that base would be. It'd change the angle from a 40 degree angle. But you're on the right track. Think about this is swinging out this way. How else could it swing? It could swing left. And it could form kind of like this, where this is 19. Here's how the math is going to work this out and give you two possible solutions for this. We're going to start with the law of sines. Sine of 40 degrees over 19, that's the sine of big A over little a, equals the sine of big B over little b. <clears throat> We're going to multiply both sides together and divide out what we don't need. So I'm just going to go 19 sine of B is equal to 20 sine of 40 degrees. And I'm going to divide both sides by 19. I used to do these problems the hard way, where I would decide how many solutions there were first. Mr. Keelahan convinced me, make it easier on yourself. Let the math work itself out. Because at this point, how do you solve for sine? What's the function? Arc sine. So we're going to plug in a calculator, arc sine, and you're going to be absolutely certain that you are in degrees mode. This is why Inspire people, I want you to have that update so you can just click at the top and change it from degrees to radians. What? This is in degrees. Oh, okay. we're, in, we're in degrees because we're within a triangle that we're looking at that. Okay, so I haven't pre-worked these examples out, so I'm going to type this out in my calculator. 20 times sine of 40 over 19. And this gives me B is equal to 42.58 degrees. Okay. We have yeah. Are you doing the arc sine because... I'm doing the arc sine because I'm trying to solve for B. And the only way to get B by itself when it's the sine of B is to do the arc sine of both sides. That will undo the left side, get me B right back out. We are in degrees. It's, it's how many digits it shows. 
And you can just change it to float if you're not sure. It'll just display as many digits as it, as it wants. OK. Guys, your calculator spit out one value for arc sine. If there's anything from that whole arc section that I could teach you, it was that it's a function. It will always throw one value out. But you should know there are two values between 0 and 180 that have the same sign. So I want, this is where we're going to draw a little line and create a second hypothetical triangle with a different angle B. Angle B could also be 180 minus that. Because that angle will have exactly the same sine value. which means it could be 137.42. So you're going to have two possible angle Bs. It's, well, from a, two reasons here. From a sine reason, isn't the sine of this angle, 42.58 degrees, exactly the same as the sine of this angle, 137.42 degrees, because if this is 42.58 as well, they're going to have the exact same y to r ratio if I just treat it as the sine. It's such an awkward sign. So it's a, time. Now, come back up to this picture. This would be the one where you have your angle B is equal to 137.42. This is an obtuse triangle. It has an obtuse angle. This one's the acute one that has the 42.58 degrees. Yeah. C would be tiny. <coughs> like side length C is really small, and side and angle C is really small in that one. Okay, come back down. You have two possible hypotheticals you need to finish. For the first hypothetical, we're going to move on to angle C, which is going to be 180 minus the other two angles. The angle A that was given, this is common to both versions, is 40. And the angle B on this one is 42.58. So you punch in, or you work in your head. But at this point, you probably want to punch in, so I'm doing it too. I get angle C is 92 point, or 97.42. I've had students use highlighters on this because you get to keep track of what's, what applies to which one. This is the first triangle, so this is all applying to that first triangle. What am I missing, and how do I find it? Yeah, I'm missing side C. So I'm going to start with the sine of A over A. Since that was all given, I'm just going to use that. Equals the sine of C over C. Sometimes I write this out this way so I don't have to solve and write all the numbers out completely again, although you can. C would be A sine angle C over sine of angle A. And if you have all those values somewhere in your calculator, you can just type them, the, kind of call them back up. Otherwise, we're doing, let's see, A was 19. So this is 19 sine of 97.42 degrees over sine of, what was angle A, 40? Okay, what do you need to be very, very, very cautious of right here? If I can finish writing that 40 down, this is being a little weird. Are any of those values in this calculation a rounded value? Which one? 97.42. In your calculators, you should have stored or have a few more decimal places of the value of that. If you're using an 84 or an Inspire, you can call them back up. If you're not, you may want to, with angle C, record just a few more decimal places down for that. Instead of just 97.42, you may want to write like 97.42003. or something which it would be the next several decimal values, just so when you type it in, you're not going to have a rounding mistake. <coughs> in any case, I'm going to 19 sine of that divided by the sine of 40. And you get 
I'm going to call that side C. I'm going to highlight that. When I gave these problems in the past, I create answer blanks that are places that you actually move them to so it's all organized and it's easy to follow. Okay, let's go to the second half. You get to do exactly the same thing you did on the left side, on the right side with the new values. Angle C should be 180 minus 40 minus 137.42. If it's negative, then you, you, you call that no solution. You actually cross it out and you say that that didn't work. If it's not, you proceed as if it's a valid solution. This is angle C is 2.58 degrees. We solved before that angle C should be tiny. So the fact that this is ending up really, really small is meaningful. It's, it's consistent. Wait. Two, different. two different triangles. Two different, okay. two different possibilities. To find side C, we now need to do exactly the same thing we just did. Sine of A, actually I'm just going to write it from right here, because that's the same. C is equal to A sine of angle C over sine of angle A, which is 19 sine of 2.58 degrees over the sine of 40 degrees. Obviously I can't give too many of these because it's, it's a lot of work to find both of them. You just have to be consistent and track the two possibilities. And angle C was a rounded value, so if you don't have it stored in your calculator, write something down like 2.57997, so you've got enough decimal places to make it not be a crazy rounding error. Um, your final should be C is equal to, and again, I haven't worked this out, so I'm actually just right, doing this in my calculator as we go, 19 times sine of 2.57996 over sine of 40. And you get C is 1.33. Oops, that should be pink. Um, those six values would be what I'm looking for, and that they're matched. Like, they should not be just kind of interspersed. The six, the three on the left are the case for the one triangle, the three on the right are the case for the other triangle, and your other three values for each of them are given. So those are two unique triangles. You want to go back up and see how they look. On the left side, you have triangle one. This is the one with the acute angle. On the right side, this is the one with the obtuse angle and the really, really, really tiny side length and side angle. OK, yes, Taylor? So for both of them, A is 40. A stays the same for both of them, except for the given. It's the B and the C that change. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 This will occur or could occur any time that you are missing two angles, so you have to use an arc, arc sign to get one of them. Yeah, I totally forgot I had that ruler. OK. Um, we're going to do one more example, and then we're going to go over homework and kind of just get you guys started. I just need to see what number I'm on. What? I didn't have to. I tried, but one of those didn't work. Like, so on that first problem, it was the sign of, what was it, 80? One of the, and so 100 degrees was the other one. But when I tried to find that third angle, it, it was an angle of zero. So it didn't work. So like if there's anything but zero, would that work? Right. So like, let's say we try to do this, and we solve for angle C here, and I get a negative angle. That means that second triangle doesn't happen. So if it's negative or zero? Right, we just stop. OK, I'm going to give you angle B is 54.3 degrees. A is 62.5. And B is 29.6. This is also the same case. So I changed the letters on you. What you should notice is that when you set up the sine of an angle over its side, so I'm going to do sine of B over B equals I'm missing angle A. In textbooks, this case is called the ambiguous case. Ambiguity happens because it could be multiple possibilities. 
but you're missing the angle that corresponds to the side. <clears throat> That's what's happening here. So we're going to solve for angle A and see what happens. I multiply both sides. I get sine of A is equal to 62.5 times the sine of 54.3 degrees over 29.6. And we're going to now take the arc sine of that. So if you have a calculator that does this all in one step, that's the most helpful one. 62.5 sine of 54.3 degrees over 29.6. If you plug this in right now, or if you've been following along and tried to plug this in, as I just did, on my calculator, it said A is equal to this. What did that mean this ratio did? Remember, which kinds of ratios don't have a sine value, or arc sine? Close. So there's no zero on the bottom here. Remember that sine of an angle, the sine of something can only be between negative 1 and 1 because your y can't be bigger than your radius. This happened so that the top was bigger than the bottom. You get an angle that's undefined. This is going to be your favorite case because if angle A is undefined, then guess what the solution of this triangle is? Undefined. You get to draw a big, fat, empty set symbol. Once you get angles undefined, you're done. This triangle doesn't happen. Um, I want to show what this might look like and see why this doesn't happen to kind of get this this image down? Oh, no, we need to. So I'm going to draw angle B is 54.3 degrees. The side next to it was 62.5, and this side was 29.6. Do you see why this triangle didn't form? It's not that. It's that it can't close. This side, this length was not long enough. Yep, yep. Mine says undefined because it tries to calculate it. You may get other errors. It just depends on what error correction that they put in. Okay. So bottom line, presume that there's going to be a second solution. Anytime you're solving for the angle, presume that there's going to be a second solution. I want to write that down. Anytime you are finding a missing angle, we'll say finding two missing angles, because if you have two angles, guess what? You have the third, right? Some of them is 180. That's easy. But anytime you're finding two missing angles, presume there could be two solutions. To kickstart that second triangle, it happens at the moment that you do the arc sign. So if you do the arc sign, We'll say if the arc sine is equal to n, the other angle is 180 degrees minus that n. That gives you the other one that you can work with, and that creates two possible triangles. Okay, I'm going to stop there.